It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it is time for another First Thoughts Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on King Schneel, the newest five star that was just shown this morning earlier over on YouTube. As with all of my First Impressions videos, I'll give you my two cents on the character. Do I think they're good? Where would I play them? What types of equipment and artifacts would I play them on? All those things you've come to expect from a First Thoughts Initial Impressions video. Helia Lua was also shown earlier this morning on YouTube, but her kit is identical to how it was when she was previewed a few weeks ago. So if you want my thoughts on that character, I will link that video down in this description. I will say her skill three animation is phenomenal and one of the best ones that Epic Seven has ever made. So yeah, kudos again to the art team for that one. Speaking of S3 animations, let's take a look at this sick one now from Schneel himself. You seek the throne? Come then, take your seat. It's time for me to get back to it. I've been putting off all this paper. It seems there's nowhere left to run. So like I said, pretty sick Esther animation, but I think we could all agree it's nothing compared to Helly and Lua's. That thing is just incredible. Speaking of incredible in the English dub of Epic 7, Schneel is voiced by Philip Reich who you may know as the voice of Mr. Gold Experience himself, Giorno Giovanna, from one of my favorite series of all time, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to Schneel's stats, he is an Earth Soul Weaver of the Tara Zodiac symbol, which means he shares a stat line with Ray, Ahmed, and Frida. Taking a closer look at his stats, he has 694 attack, 655 defense, 5,340 health, 117 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, no starting effectiveness, and 30% starting effect resistance. His imprint for the team is attack percentage, and his self imprint is health percentage. A uh, decent imprints overall, nothing super spectacular, still pretty good. As for the stat line itself, this translates to the fastest speed among Soul Weavers in Epic 7, and also the highest starting effect resistance. It comes at the cost of, well, having pretty bad attack, but who cares? Soul Weavers all usually have pretty bad attack. And uh, not the best health. 5,340 is pretty low compared to most of the five stars in Epic 7, so he's pretty squishy. But it's not the worst. He could be Tamarind or Desert Jewel Basar, who have like only around 4,300 health. So yeah, could always be worse. Overall, though, fairly good stat line. I would rather have a character that is the best in something, namely speed and ER, than just be very middle of the pack or just, you know, have something that is absolutely debilitating like a really low health total or really low defense total like in the case of a scorpio thief as always before we analyze or break down the character let's talk about what each of the skills do so that that way we're all on the same page let's start with the skill two passive i know a thing about poison increases schneel's max health by 10 percent after an enemy uses a skill when an ally is inflicted with poison or venom dispels all debuffs from schneel and activates cleanse can only be activated once every one to two turns depending on malagora Cleanse is a non-attack skill that dispels all debuffs from all allies and grants immunity to all allies for one turn before resetting the skill cooldowns of Schneel. So things to note here, it will reset his skill 3 every time you activate Cleanse on this passive. And also, this does snap him out of CC as evidenced in the actual preview match at the end of his reveal video. So yes, this will get you out of things like Sun and Sleep, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, you don't have to worry about the fact that maybe he might not be able to do his job. Moving on to his skill three, it is May You Walk Yourself Out. You acquire three souls upon use, and it has a four to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. Attacks all enemies and increases defense of all allies for two turns for increasing the combat radius of Schneel by 35 to 50% depending on Malagora. A successful attack inflicts 4,000 fixed damage, increases fixed damage by 4,000 every time the skill is used, stacking up to two times. So I believe that is 12,000 uh, for the max fixed damage on this move. And finally, the basic attack skill is this how you do it. Attacks the enemy and dispels one debuff from an ally. Soul burn effect for the cost of 10 souls dispels a debuff from all allies. Now that you know the kit, let's talk about the character. It's pretty obvious what Schneel is designed to do. And that is give players an easy to acquire answer to Death Dealer Ray, a character who has been plaguing literally Epic 7's PvP for over a year at this point. Ray has become so ubiquitous in the metagame at all skill levels that he has created a really toxic PvP game environment, pun sort of intended. Cloud of Death is pretty much the best move in the game when it comes to generating tempo, which can instantly win games, and it's on a character that can be played aggressively as well as reactively. 
There's virtually no play style that Death Dealer Ray is not good on in the current state of the game. Couple this with the fact that even new players can pick him up from the Fallen Land Moonlight Selector, and well, you have a recipe for a character that terrorizes just about every level of play in the game, from Bronze all the way up to Legend. In my recent Moonlight 5-star headhunt tier list, I placed Death Dealer Ray at the very top of the list because he's that damn good. I said unless they create an answer to him, he was going to remain there. Well, as I alluded to a second ago, Neil is that answer. First, let's talk about his skill too. I know a thing about poison. I just want to say to the design team, if you're somehow watching this, kudos. Thank you for making Schneel the type of silver bullet answer to the poison slash venom metagame and naming the skill what it is. For those of you that skip the lore and don't pay attention, in episode three, Schneel is the king of Lefundos and was being poisoned in an attempt to have him vacate the throne. Once he figures out he's being poisoned, he overcomes it and reclaims his throne. Your character that answers Death Dealer Ray is one who canonically survives assassination attempts by poisoning and flips the script on his enemies and succeeds in order to reclaim his throne. You already know from my Veronica Impressions video that I'm a huge supporter of when the game's lore matches the character's gameplay. 11 out of 10 decision to have this character have this kit. To recap, this character survives death by poison, reclaims his throne, decides to vacate it in order to save Epic Seven's player base from the cancer that is Death Deal Array with a resignation letter that simply says, I quit, refuses to elaborate. What a chad. As for how he functions as a Death Deal Array counter, it seems pretty good at first glance. The fact that his skill to cleanse activates even if he is crowd controlled means there is simply no winning for Death Deal Array against him outside of pressing his S2 skill and hopefully killing Schneel before his next turn comes around. If you use his skill one or skill three, well, that's going to just set off Schneel's passive, which is obviously bad for the Ray player. Now, there is some counterplay here with Schneel, so he's not exactly perfect, right? The Taurus Zodiac sign isn't exactly the thing I would have wanted on this character. I appreciate that he has the highest speed amongst Soul Weavers, so that that way he can unload his skill threes in rapid succession, but I want my silver bullet, the thing that answers the problem, to not get burst down. Personally, I would have made him either Ruel or Destina's stat line, as those have both the highest defense and highest HP respectively, so that, that way you can't actually kill him super easily. Him also having high starting effect resistance also doesn't feel super great either. Anyone that has ever played with ML Sharoon, if you've ever put effect resistance on her, you know that one of the ways that Death Deal Ray can counterplay you is by pressing skill two and then only using skill ones on Sharoon until she is dead because if she has high ER, you won't sleep her and therefore you will never proc her passive, right? So that is a way for people to kind of sidestep the intended use of Schneel is if you build Schneel on a ton of effect resistance, they just try to burst him down and only use your sleeps on Schneel, which you'll resist, and therefore you'll never get the passive and never get to use a bunch of fixed damage with his skill three. That kind of sucks. On top of that, because Cleanse, the uh, non-attack skill component of his passive, is, well, a non-attack skill, characters like Selene can almost assuredly pick him off, you know, because her skill three just does a ton of damage. I sincerely doubt that Schneel is going to survive a Soul Burn S3 from Selene, a Thunderclap Soul Burn. That thing kills tanks, and as far as I know, like only Ruel of Light is really going to survive that, and that is due to her kind of like updated passive on Light Ascending. So yeah, not a perfect answer to Ray, but Schneel is one that feels very strong nonetheless. If you're picking him in the spots he's supposed to go, he should give you a sizable amount of advantage through his skill 3 spam, that the passive provides without experiencing any of the tempo loss that Death Deal Array usually inflicts on your team. This is, of course, if you mitigate the three downsides that I just talked about. As for how we build him, I'm not really 100% sure here. I definitely think we try to build him with as high of a health and defense as possible, and having some speed to help cycle his skill three seems pretty good as well. But as I said before, I think I'm not personally going to be going with any effect resistance on them as I don't want to give Ray players a safe target that they could just skill one over and over again. I want them to get punished very badly for sleeping anyone on my team, even if that person happens to be Schneel. Your mileage may vary based on who you fight, like saying they're qual for instance, maybe you might want more effect resistance for that matchup, 
But for right now, I think, at least at the start, I'm going to go with no effect resistance. Speed set, revenge set, and counter set all seem like interesting propositions for four-piece sets. And then health, defense, and immunity seem like good two-piece sets to start out on. Or again, maybe resist if, say, effect resistance ends up being the way to go with the character. Now, let's move on to artifacts, and we'll start by talking about his first. It is, of course, homage to Tarmon. After an ally is attacked, when the damage suffered is equivalent to 25% or more of max health, grants a barrier to the target for two turns. Barrier strength is equivalent to 10 to 20% of the caster's max health, depending on artifact level. It can only be activated once per turn. So it's essentially another protection artifact for the Soul Weaver class, akin to things like Water's Origin or Guardian Ice Crystals. I think that if you don't have access to Guardian Ice Crystals, this is a pretty good pickup for most players. It might actually end up even being better than Guardian Ice Crystals. I'm not really sure. But overall, I do think that it is a very strong Soul Weaver artifact and one that I would be happy to pick up a couple of copies of. Uh, again, this is going to be one of those ones where you'd have to just kind of test it and see. On paper, it does, again, seem like a side grade, downgrade, maybe slight upgrade of Guardian Ice Crystals, which is one of, if not the best Soul Weaver artifacts in the entire game. But Soul Weavers in general just have so many good artifacts that maybe this one just ends up falling by the wayside. It's very hard to evaluate because, again, Soul Weavers are probably, I would say, maybe the best class overall when it comes to actual artifacts. They just have so many good ones that are good in so many different scenarios. So to summarize the whole video, is Schneel worth the pull? Absolutely. Even if he is not a limited unit, not a collab unit, uh, he is absolutely worth the pickup in my opinion. He might not be the perfect answer to Death Deal Ray, but having another answer, or at least pseudo answer in general, is worth the pickup if you are a serious PvP player, right? There's just so few good answers to Ray already in the pool. It's basically like Green Selene, Dragon King Shroon, Moon Money, Dominion, right? Not too many amazing answers, so having another one that helps answer what is arguably the strongest character in PvP right now, that's a good thing in my opinion, and it's absolutely worth the pickup. Two final things that I want to talk about here in the video before I wrap it up. Number one, if you are trying to take Ray with the headhunt right, that is going on as I'm recording this video, the Moonlight Headhunt event is up, the recruitment event. Death Deal Ray was my number one pick overall, or very close to it, in my headhunt tier list. If you were considering Ray, I encourage you to wait until after Schneel's release and see how he performs before you take Ray. Because if Schneel is incredibly effective at the job, then the stock in Death Dealer Ray goes down, in which case, consider an alternative like Ambitious Tywin, C Phantom Politis, etc. I know that there are going to be people that ask me this in the comment section, which is why I wanted to take a couple of seconds to talk about it here at the end of the video. Number two, I'm well aware of the fact that if somehow Death Dealer Ray kind of goes uh, by the wayside and isn't very strong, that the strongest thing you can do in the game at that point is things like Harseti and a lot of health scaling bruisers and injury won't be as good against them. Uh, penetration is already out the window because of Ilna. I am keenly aware of the fact that bruisers are incredibly strong right now, and we're getting to the point where maybe injury is being pushed back on. Me personally, I've always just held the opinion that Smile Gate will right the ship. If the Knight meta slash bruiser meta ends up becoming very strong, turn two becomes way too strong, they will course correct. Me personally, from my experiences playing this season, the only character that feels almost oppressively strong right now is Afternoon Soak Flan. That character just feels absolutely insane to me. Uh, but again, if turn two gets to be too strong, I'm sure they will course correct within the coming weeks to months. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up. As always, like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Later now.